Hi, I'm Laura Flanders. What if you could vote on whether everyone at your company could lower or raise their wage? What if there was a cap on how much a CEO or an executive director at your firm could be paid in relation to the base starting employee's wage? What if workplaces could be more democratic? Mark Dworkin and Melissa Young of the documentary Shift Change have made a film about a whole lot of places right here in the U.S. where that is exactly the case. Yeah, in Madison we have some of the oldest worker co-ops, so Nature's Bakery, Union Cab, Community Pharmacy, um, we've all been around for at least 30 years. Be right on time, 7 o'clock. Yep. Our company trusts us to work in the most productive way for ourselves and the company. And we in turn trust the company not to screw us over. <laughs> because we're part of the company and anything that happens within the company we have a little bit of say in. It's way better than the corporations I've worked in before. Um, as a member you're also an owner and you have the same voice as every other owner. Everybody has one share, one vote. I work here as an employee, but I also own one share of the company. I, I have a say in what happens with the company, which is, which is awesome. We have got started because of our interest in Mondragon. It's in the Basque country of northern Spain. But there they have incredibly accomplished, very large-scale worker co-ops. Somebody approached us and said, we could use a new film about Mondragon. The last one came out in 1979. Since you folks have produced about worker co-ops, you obviously understand. You also can function in Spanish. So that got us going in Mondragon. But then as we talked about it with each other, we said the last thing we would want to happen if we produce such a film, we'd hate to have people in this country look at it and say, gee, that's wonderful. Too bad we can't do it here. So a lot of people think this is just something that happens somewhere else and something that happens in countries with a history of more socialism or more cooperative uh, action. What is the situation in the States vis-a-vis co-ops, Mark? Well, there's probably a dozen worker co-ops in our film in the States. Um, almost all of them have been around for 30 or 40 years, and they've been successful. They've been successful in two ways. One, as businesses, they can endure, make enough money to pay their bills and the people that work there, but also by, remain, by retaining the cooperative spirit in which Co-ops, by definition, it's one member, one vote. So in cooperative workplaces, no important decision can be made unless everybody votes. We went and visited uh, a co-op of mainly immigrant workers who do green house cleaning. Um, and in fact, that sector amongst worker co-ops is one of the fastest uh, growing types of uh, business in terms of the people in them. Immigrants, I think, are seeing that this is a way to team up, uh, to make a business uh, that in which they can have some say and control. Me gusta la flexibilidad que hay aquí, mucha flexibilidad. Este, mis hijos tienen citas en el doctor o se enferman y aquí es bien fácil que me dan chance de ir a, con mis hijos. Sabiendo que la limpieza es tan fuerte requiere mucho músculo y mucho trabajo físico, también sabemos que nuestras mujeres tienen otras capacidades para lograr que estas mujeres no solamente limpien, sino que puedan escalar otros campos. Y con el empoderamiento que ellas aprenden, comparten con su comunidad interna, comparten con su familia. Yo tengo tantos hermanos que no los puedo contar. O estar en una cooperativa no era para hacernos ricas ni millonarias, pero sí era para tener un estilo de vida mejor. We should maybe clarify our terms in that people may be wondering, are they part of a co-op if they're part of a green market co-op or a grocery co-op? Are they? What's, what's the difference? By and large, they are. Um, the co-ops in our film are a small subset of co-ops, and that being worker co-ops. So in a green marketing co-op, you may become a member because you choose to buy goods there, but the people working in that place full time may not be in charge. Um, in a worker co-op, the customers are not the members of the co-op, the people that work in the place are the members of the co-op. And we thought it was an important distinction to make, partly because there's not that many of them, and a lot of people think 
that without managers and bosses to tell us what to do, we would be helpless. But what's been proven in Argentina and in the United States and in Mondragon is that people can learn how to run things, and they can learn how to run things democratically and successfully. What would it take from government to make the kind of co-op that you're talking about and that you've studied easier to begin, easier to maintain? I think of a sort of two broad categories. One is, um, until very recently, the Small Business Administration could not make funds available to cooperatives, although they could, cooperatives are businesses. Um, they could be treated like other businesses in that way. In fact, there's some legislation in the works now federally to provide more resources to cooperatives. So that would be one thing, some positive benefits. The other is to curtail the nasty practices of big corporations, which are hurtful to all of us and to small business of any kind. So in Mondragon, they achieve the status they have is like 85,000 people working there. They do $25 billion worth of business a year and so on. They were able to become large enough and strong enough before international corporations got wind of them and, and tried to do them in. I'm fearful in this country that if some cooperative became big and somebody found them threatening, they could do things to try to hurt them. But if we had better regulation in general, if we had better antitrust laws in general, if that was enforced, then cooperative members have told us time and again, we don't want anything any more than any other business gets. We just want a chance to do what we do and not be undermined. So there are the macro challenges. There are also the, the micro challenges. Somebody in your film talks about it requires a certain kind of mindset to be an effective co-op member. How would you describe that mindset, and does everybody have it? A lot of us uh, grow up with a sense of cooperation in our family. Um, we see these disasters, like the recent tornado that we saw in Oklahoma. People pitch in. I mean, there is a sense of um, getting involved in things and caring about our neighbors in some real ways. Um, but a lot of that gets trained out of us, I think. Once we start school with a top-down, uh, kind of uh, structure and, and many of our jobs are very top down. Um, so it takes a person who's willing to listen, who's willing to learn, who is uh, eager to collaborate. And um, what we learn from a lot of these co-ops is that doesn't always just develop naturally, that in fact there's a lot of training. There's also an element of the cooperative spirit that you bring out in your film that has to do with more than just the workplace. There's a couple of people in the film that say, we're here not just to earn a wage and accrue some capital. We're here to transform society. W what do they mean by that, Mark? The Mondragon cooperatives, which are the most advanced in the world, I would say, um, were spearheaded by a visionary priest 80 years ago, 70 years ago. And his vision was less economic development or worker cops per se. He wanted to have a society in which people make things happen, in which they respect one another, in which they behave in mutually supportive and cooperative ways. And he recognized that most of us spend most of our waking hours on the job. So the, jo the experience we have on the job is going to spill over into the rest of life. So on the job, the, the, there's a friend of ours that we're working on this project I described what it's like in co-ops, in which people are encouraged to take initiative and offer suggestions and even criticize their superiors if they do it in a constructive way. And he said, every place I've ever worked, keep your mouth shut and your head down is the way things work. Well, to the extent that people on the job get encouraged to think for themselves in, positive, in constructive ways, and to bring forward ideas about how to do things better, then when they leave work and they're dealing with the school their kids go to or what's going on in their neighborhood, they've already learned that they have certain abilities that they can manifest in the world. We also heard from people in this country um, that when they think long-term and deep, uh, that if we're gonna have a stronger democracy, and, and many of us think that democracy is more than just uh, casting a vote every four years, um, one in which people really participate, that in fact having people fully participate in their workplace can really help contribute to that. What's your takeaway from this study of co-ops across the country? Melissa, as you show the film, what do you want people to, to get out of watching Shift Change? What we would like and what we're seeing is that people get a sense of possibility. There are a lot of us in this country right now who can start feeling pretty pessimistic about having any impact on our economic circumstances. Um, 
of have, actually having a job where we would really have a say and we might actually benefit if the business does well instead of some absentee stakeholders. And um, I think people walk away thinking um, there, this is a possibility. Maybe not for me, but I can support the one that's down the street. Um, and uh, we can start really considering how we might be rebuilding an economy from the ground up. Melissa and Mark, really, thanks for coming in. Glad to thanks have you. Thanks for having us. We'll have more information at our website.